everybody, and welcome to Houston Life on this rather rainy Tuesday, February 26th. I'm Derek Shore. And I'm Courtney Savala. I know it's gloomy out there, but we have a little something that could add a little pep to your step. Oh, we sure do. Hot off the presses. Hot off the presses, our celebrity pup Tex. Look Check him that. out. Not only is, our, is he our Houston Life dog, but we can now add supermodel to his list of accomplishments. He is so cute. So adorable. If you guys uh, run by a Pet Talk magazine, it's not just the cover, but there is a multi-page feature inside the magazine featuring our furry can friend. Can you flip to the page with him in it? Let because the, um, like the it. cover shot is amazing. I know. He's uh, a spread shot, I think, is what you call it. Let's, oh. oh, here we go. There we go. How's Look that? Look at that. Come when called. It's all about training. Puppy and this is school. Well, it's perfectly appropriate that the magazine uh, is out now because coming up on today's show, we're going to talk about tips to help potty train your puppy. It's a task that may seem daunting to many, but it does not have to be that way from feeding schedules to even an app that can help predict your puppy's patterns and avoid having accidents in the house. <laughs> I love this video. I know, so cute. Our friend Stephanie Benefit from Believe in Dog Training will share the 10 things we can all do to set our puppies up for success. And plus, you can add some glam to your rodeo gear. You're going to need it in this gloomy weather. We're sharing four ways to take your Western wear to the next level and the wardrobe upgrades that are sure to turn heads Ooh. and speaking of wardrobe upgrades how about a little bling a little bling bling yours is blinged out check Blingers. out these really cool Houston life rodeo hats that we got and uh, these are from Diane the hat lady yeah southern glitz Glam, right? Southern, am I saying it right? I think that's her, I yeah. I think it is. We have a picture she of her. She's so great. Is so great and so gracious. We got these fun hats today, custom made and painted. Look at how cute she is. I know. She Talk about well-dressed. She is so great. And look, she created your hat, Courtney. Right here. Right there the in spots. front of your eyes. While you watch, she added the bling bling. I actually met Diane last year at the Corral Club at Rodeo. She was so nice. Brandon and I were sitting there in the club. And she walked up and offered to buy us drinks. I mean, she is the cutest thing. Southern Gal Glitz. Southern Gal Glitz. And she even has a little trailer. Yeah. So find her online. And we're trying to convince her to come on the show. But she says she's a little camera shy. But nobody believes that. Nobody believes it. But you can get one of these, too. They're super cute. And these are perfect for my rodeo outfit. I'm going to be out there tomorrow. And part of my outfit is this aqua color. I'm going to be so out I'm there, too. Very, I know. So I, ne are. I need to bring my... Yeah. My aqua blue. Do you like hat. my nails? <laughs> I feel like it's a Vanna White. Like you're a hand model. Yes, I know. The bling really is just great. what's getting me. I love it. Okay, so some very big news, folks. Um, you know, it's, we win some and we lose some. Well, but then we win. But sometimes we win. And, you know, last week we mentioned that I was in this Reliant Rodeo Roundup, which is this annual cook-off yeah. competition with local media folks pairing up with local charities. We won $1,000 the day of the event for the Pablo Foundation, which helps to fight pediatric cancer. But thanks to all of you <gasps> and folks around, I don't know. You got the voters, vote? We got the online vote. We asked you to vote, and you did. Thank you so much. Yay! So, we, so what does that get? We raised an additional $2,500. Dude! Totaling 3500 bucks to go to support the Pablo you Foundation. You know what? That money, those dollars, congratulations, by Thank the way. You. And that's, that's so incredible because when you see how that money works within that organization, as you have, yeah. it's so incredible. As we always say, it's not the person going through the treatment. It's about that. But it's also when it's for these children, it's the entire family. Absolutely. Well, and one thing that I didn't really ever connect the dots about is that when a young child is diagnosed with any form of cancer, suddenly their world stops. stops. They don't go to school. They don't see their friends. No. They're not playing outside. And what's great about the Pablo Foundation is that it doesn't just support the funding of seed grants for promising cancer research, pediatric cancer research, by yeah. the way, because that's a tiny fraction gets, of the research. Pediatric puzzle. cancer gets very little of the money that's raised, right? Exactly. And there are so many great researchers, especially right here mm -hmm. in H-Town. And so Pablo helps to support those seed grants. But at the same time, they have this photography program where professional photographers 
doctors are linked up with these young cancer patients and the patient is given a camera. They, their world opens up because suddenly they start seeing art everywhere. They take pictures, they learn about photography. It doesn't require a lot of physical exertion, right? but it opens their world in ways that you know, it might not be possible when someone's undergoing cancer treatment. So we're proud supporters of them. I can't wait to do stories about them because they have just launched in Houston, even though they've been around for about 10 years. It's so awesome. I'm so proud of you and all the work that you've done in the last week. And, and of course, over the year, but oh, you. Well, you know, me, how much fun. Uh, That's a blast. Team, and it takes an effort. And thanks again to all of you who voted. So that was a that was a very big deal. Okay, uh, and <laughs> that was a great win. <laughs> that was a great win. Did you win yesterday in something else too? You know what? Sometimes you win. Sometimes you come in. I don't know. Dead last. Oh, that happened to me before. Yeah, the celebrity goat milking. Um, I think we have a clip from yesterday. Okay. See for yourselves. Three, two, one, oh my gosh, I'm a little nervous. My hands are warm. I'm not sure if she's liking this. Sorry, cheese nips. I'm doing my best. Oh man, just imagine I'm your baby. Who's your baby? Cheese nips. Who's your baby? Who's your baby? Yeah, her name is Cheese Nips. How adorable. Oh my word. So, you know, you didn't you didn't bring oh. the top goat milking prize home. Not, Not even, even close. close. I mean, I think I got maybe a teaspoon out of that sweet goat cheese nips. You never know. You don't know until you until you milk a goat it's a strange sensation okay those are not yeah. my hands by the way i should point out there are some people who are so amazingly uh i don't know competitive slash talented skilled all of the above sarah pepper our friend from mix 96.5 pregnant sarah pepper by the way oh she was down milking that goat like nobody's business she almost took home uh the mother load prize really i mean i figured milking a goat maybe comes in handy if you're about to give birth to a baby right because you yeah, i mean it could like kind of similar no no not at all to like breastfeeding a baby no it's not similar no no, no. it's not well it involves milk it does that's probably the only similarity there. anyway okay well my <laughs> big concern was hurting the goat because it look it looks easier than it actually is i was afraid that i was gonna yeah hurt. pull something or pull yeah. something but i guess it ultimately it makes the goat feel better because it relieves the pressure, the pressure of having you know a body full of milk yeah i've done that a couple times and it's just i don't know it wasn't my <laughs> rodeo thing to do it, it's very... milking a goat that's what i was gonna say that's what i've done a couple of times well listen i was not um i was not concerned about coming in dead last because i knew that even despite the rain i would be out there trying all the carnival food you know there's a place called biggies we stopped by and we tried some of the most delicious fried foods Ugh. i could have eaten a basket of those fried oreos listen those are so good how about the twinkie Oh, that is good, too. I didn't have one of those yesterday, but coming up later this week, though, We're you'll see that. I did a little uh, fried food tasting, and, of course, that's one of the signatures of the rodeo. Yeah, well, and then we're going to be out there tomorrow, so, you know, probably have to go drink some wine. Well, explain the wine garden, too, because this, I think, is one of the hidden gems at rodeo. Some people walk right by the wine garden. Maybe they don't even realize it's there, but because it looks so exclusive... That's what I thought the very first year. You're I thought, like, oh, I can't garden? go there. I can't go in. I didn't know. I didn't get an invite to that. You I can't can go. go. In. You can go. And, by the way, the bottles that they're selling there are cheaper. A little bit. There's a little bit more of a discount than it would be if you're going to walk into a big box store and buy it. Um, but, again, we were talking about this. You have to remember, this is a committee, right? So everybody there, volunteers, make sure you tip them because that's what they're working oh, for. Oh, yeah, yeah, for but sure. But some really great um, champagne, sparkling uh, whites and reds. But it's also great to have that conversation of why they are selecting these wines. So we're going to have that conversation tomorrow. We're going to go out there and, you know, somebody's got to do it. Yeah. I know, it's a rough assignment, right? <laughs> but if you do go to Rodeo or you know someone who did, you got to keep an eye out for it. It's where all the, like, the life-size boots are, boot row, boot right? Row. And right by NRG Stadium and the Astrodome, tucked right in there is the wine garden. Walk right in, jump in line, grab a nice bottle or a glass, and then go find a place to sit down and, and enjoy the music. live music. Yeah, it's so much fun. It really is. We just need this weather to start cooperating. I know. You know? I know.
It's true, but it, it will. By the way, we mentioned that Sunday was the uh, the big annual wine auction that yeah. happened, and that, of course, is a huge fundraiser for charity. We're still waiting for the final totals. Gotta, you gotta text me when you get that total. Uh, but they, I, I think the Grand Champion bottle went for $150,000? Something like that. I mean, that's about average for a good bottle of red. Right, that we spent? Yeah. Not even close. Not even close. Uh, but I'd like to be on that committee. I know, the right? Tasting committee. I'm just throwing <laughs> it out there. Is there a tasting <laughs> committee? There committee? should be. They right? Work, they work so hard. Uh, they work so they hard. Do. But the and, tasting portion, I'd sign up for. And by the way, what I love about rodeo, and we've talked about this yesterday as opening day, but when you think about the commitment that these rodeo uh, committee people have, three weeks that they do this, alongside their family and work duties and everything else. They're out there working this rodeo, and so it's it's incredible. I mean, there's so many things behind the scenes and so many people it takes to put this on day after day, hour after hour, because it's not just a nighttime Absolutely. party. Absolutely. Well, these people still have day jobs that they have to deal with. Yeah. In addition to volunteering at the rodeo, so many people, I'm sure you guys know people who are on committees, or maybe you yourselves are on committees. You know what I also find really fascinating? are the people who shine your boots at the rodeo. Totally. We're gonna do a story about them coming up in the next few weeks, but what's amazing is you get to sit there while people shine your boots and you get to know them, and these are not Houstonians. Some of them are, right. but they come from far and wide. They come from Tennessee and Louisiana and Arkansas and Oklahoma, and for a lot of these folks, they pack up, they head to Houston, and they're here for an entire month staying in a camper or staying elsewhere, but a lot of those folks have really incredible stories and yeah. they work so, so hard. And your boots will look amazing. So it's, don't walk on by when you see them. It's worth $11. Yeah. I mean $11. Well. $11. $11. I know. It's a good deal. Okay. Lots of fun stuff happening. Lots of fun stuff. Okay. So if you've heard any strange noises uh, <laughs> behind the scenes here during today's show, it's just because we have a very adorable puppy. Oh, there she is. Her name is Liesl. And she's just getting used to the live TV life. She but Liesl, precious. it's going to be just fine. And after the break, because Liesl is a new puppy, for all of you with new puppies at home listen up our pro dog trainer stephanie bennett she's in the house sharing potty training tips to help make your life easier and to save your floors from all kinds <laughs> of stinky accidents we'll be right back back potty training your pup can be rough Rough, 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 get it? Teaching your dog when and where to go potty is an important step of a very happy life together. So if you have a new furry friend living at home, Stephanie Bennett, owner and director of Believe in Dog Training, is here with tips on how to teach your pup when and where to go. Hello, Tex. Hi, and Tex. Hi. Like <laughs> we had a I loose know, puppy. <laughs> I know, that's so cute. Thanks for being here. Thank you so much. And I'm going to get this little toy and give it to Lisa in her little long-term confinement area. She was a little hectic. There we go. There and we so go. that that's a Kong toy, right? You put that something is. in the middle of it to keep them busy, keep her busy, right? That's exactly right. And that's the, what that's going to do so that we can have a discussion. I love it. <laughs> Just like a toddler. <laughs> Just exactly. like a kid. Thing. What did you put in there, though? That is peanut butter and Cheerios. Okay. So just a little bit of regular Cheerio and a little bit of peanut butter. And we actually froze it. It's thawed out now, but we actually froze it because then it takes it a little bit longer. Extra chewing time. Yeah. Okay, so setting your puppy up for success. Yes. You say this is the first critical step. A lot of people with a new puppy may be overwhelmed. They're cute, but they're a lot of work. So what do you mean? How do we set them up for success? So the big deal is this, is that we have to, so many people, it's kind of amazing how many people don't understand that a schedule is very important. Um, and to make sure that we are, meaning that I need to make sure that with my patience and understanding, I teach puppy exactly exactly where I do want her to go. Not concentrating on where I don't want her to ah. go, but where it is I do want her to go. That's the most important thing. Okay. So after every single time she eats or drinks, of course, I go outside. Immediately after? Yes, after, an, and she may or may not go right then. After every nap, we go outside. After every play session, we go outside. After ever getting out of the crate or a long-term confinement area, all of those, every single time we go immediately outside. So they start to become associated. And are you using command words too? Are we talking to the dog like, now it's potty time? Like, do we say that? Yes, I say go potty, uh, but we just want to make sure because we, we know that they're ESL students, so we don't just go potty, but say uh, the word 100 times in a row, but eventually it will become associated. 
associated with this word. Also, it's fringe benefits because every time you go potty where I want you to go, you get you three get pieces of liver. Yes, three oh. little tiny pieces of liver for you as soon as you go potty. And about how much time should we allow them to go? Because I think a lot of folks may get patient. They take the dog outside, they stand there for 30 seconds, <laughs> and they think, You're okay, like, it's okay, not why happen. isn't it happening? Yes, and then we hear a lot Ooh. of, we were outside <laughs> for 10 whole minutes, and then we came in and they didn't do anything, and then we came inside and they peed on the floor. So what happens is puppies have ADD, because that's just what they do. And so I say five to 10 minutes. If you need to put them on a leash, put them on a leash, kind of walk around the backyard, let them stimulate them, their senses. After five or 10 minutes, if they don't go, bring them back inside, but do not let them have free reign, whatever you do. No, no free reign of the no, house. Uh, no way. And then, but at that point, I put her back in, or text, put him back into the crate for five or 15 minutes, and then I'll go again. Because the crate helps me anticipate when they're gonna potty. They hold it in there. Because it's a small space, That's right? right. They don't like to go where they eat and where sleep. sleep. So this, uh, the crate is a potty training tool because it teaches them to hold it. They'll hold it in there. It also helps me anticipate potty. Oh. So I put him in there. If he doesn't go, five or 10 minutes again, and then back outside we go again. Okay. And we should mention that another one of your tips is the potty party, but you already said that with the, that's when they get the treats, the this, liver treats, yes, right? Yes, as soon as they go, because a lot of times they'll go, oh my God, if every time I do this, I get that, then I want to keep doing that over and over and over again, because it's so fun and so awesome. I love it. Right. Just like potty training your kid. You have, you <laughs> exactly. get really excited about that. Exactly. Okay. You said free, no free reign, and then utilize that short time in the area. So whether that's the playpen, the crate, what if someone, I always hear this too, when people are talking about, oh yeah, I crate train my dog, and then they're gone for like 11 hours working. Yes. What is that? So we can't wow. do that. We can't do that. So short-term confinement area could, uh, short-term confinement could be, I have a belt leash on. I love this. I can hook them onto my belt so that they're here with me. I have a little tether here. I can use a tether to put them around a piece of furniture because a puppy will want to go and smell and do potty body language. Do you know what I mean? So if they're here with us, we're setting them up. I'm, I can't let them have free reign. First of all, because the more accidents they have in the house without me seeing it, the more times they think it's okay. Now, a puppy can only hold it for about, we gauge it about uh, however many months they are plus an hour or so give or take okay so if i have a three-month-old puppy they can hold it for four hours uh, give or take if give they're take. empty if they're empty okay so i would never leave a puppy if at empty i would never leave them in a crate for over three hours now if i have to go to work for eight hours that's when i would create a long-term confinement area okay and this is a long-term confinement area and so we can use an x pen and a crate. Now, here is an indoor potty patch that we used. I actually made this one, and you can make them very easily. So this is a boot tray I just got off of Amazon. Okay. Oh. And then this is a uh, PP pad. One of the pad. pads. Mm -hmm. And you see this grass has little holes in it? Yeah. So I cut this grass with these, my tools here. I cut the grass, and I fit it to here. And now I can put it in here. And so this, of course, is more like real grass yes. than anything else. Oh, Tex is watching closely everything, <laughs> yeah. your, everything every you're move, doing. Stephanie. So when I leave the house, I will give uh, my, oh, she might use it. Um, I will give my puppy the crate on one side, a potty patch on the other so that she can use it if she can't hold it. Oh, right. And then I'll also it. give her, hey, pup up. <laughs> That's a girl. I'll also give her something to do. Okay, so that is something. occupy the time. Yes, and I would prefer, because what you just saw her doing and wanting to play, I would prefer to try to use this kind of grass as opposed to pee pee pads because they will eat those pee pee pads. They're gonna chew it oh my and God. there's gonna be paper everywhere. They love it, yes. Yeah. So it. let me wow. ask you this too, because um, is it texture that they're going by? You're simulating the texture because the eyesight, the, is yeah, dogs it's can more, see color it or is no? kind of, it just, it just is more resembles grass. So dogs are drawn to absorbent surfaces. So they're kind of looking for that, which is why PP pads work. But PP pads, eventually all of our goal is to, I want you to go outside on the grass. Yeah. So PP pads, they don't look like grass at all. What they do look like is your bath mat and your kitchen mat oh, and all that yeah, kind of stuff. That's it looks true. exactly like that. So if they use that, I go, well, I trained you to do well, that, didn't I? Yeah, that's so, what I'm supposed to pee on. Yeah, so this is more like grass, so I can eventually transition to grass and grass if I have you on a schedule. Okay. And how important is that schedule? Because a lot of folks may just be on this free feeding uh, plan where they're just feeding the dog randomly yes. throughout the day. You recommend against free feeding. Yes, because I can't, again, it's about anticipating, right? So I can't anticipate, especially, of course, when you eat, it determines when you're going to go potty. So I need to know. So I can, I can figure out your body clock. It just takes me a little bit. If I write down, if I keep a log, and I keep a log on, okay, here's when you ate your breakfast, and here's when you pooped. So now I know, okay, it usually takes about 30 minutes for this puppy, after they finish their meal, to poop. Now I can anticipate this, right? Because 
I've had a log, I can see the pattern of what's going on. Now I can anticipate it all the time. But if I have been free feeding you, I have no idea what's when you going may be doing in. that. Yeah. When you might, yeah. But treats don't count in that scenario, right? They're you just, mean a full meal? Yes. Treats yes, here yes. and there are okay. Yes, of course, because we're going to use little treats all throughout the day to, to puppy train for sure. But the big meals are when it's going to help me. And then not only are you going to figure out how long does it take for them to go poop after they eat, but also I'm going to figure out, well, how many times a day do they poop? Right. Because you that's what we'll do, right? Yeah. I need to know Just that. Just like Be a baby. Because then I can anticipate all of that. And then I know what your body clock is. Okay, so then you also have apps that will do this too, right? <laughs> yes, there's a brand new app. I wish so badly that I had invented this thing because I've I been know. talking about logs forever. Uh, but it is called um, uh, Puddle, Puddle and Pile. Pile. <laughs> yes, and it's exactly this, but it's so easy because it's on your phone. So as soon as, it's just a button. If your puppy poops, you push a button. If your puppy pees, you push a button. You do all these different things. With the puppy ate, you push a button. And so then it will give you a literal, a log. It will it keep a record. And so you don't have to do this yourself. You just look at it and go, okay, here's the pattern. Here's what I'm seeing here's here's how I can anticipate it's brilliant really it really and is real quickly Stephanie too I mean like you you're bringing in this puppy you've made the decision to make this puppy part of your life part of your family let's keep the punishment phase when something doesn't <laughs> go right We've got oh wow some, there's the pad oh, situation wow. how, like this she is we're not that using pad. harsh punishment so does this mean she's pot potty trained now <laughs> Stephanie? she's done with the process what this means is she says i am bored people how dare you ignore me yeah. i'm not gonna have this and little tex is so dying cute. to see they her love as well. each other they, oh, love they each were other. playing like crazy before the yes. show today courtney thank you um, for that uh, because this is very very important stuff because the punishment part right and so the only idea here is is that i must be it, I can communicate with you. I can only tell you if I like it or I don't like it if I catch you in the act, right? It has to be immediate. Even two seconds after the fact, it's I cannot. Late. I cannot do that. I have to communicate you with you during the act. The only thing we do is interrupt and redirect. That's it. Interrupt and redirect. So there's no punishment involved. It's basically just, oh my God, oh my God. I pick them up. Yes, yeah, thank you. Hi. <laughs> and then I run them outside and try to see if they'll finish. Never, ever use any harsh punishment like rubbing their nose in it, spanking right. them, scolding them, because all that is is confusing. Yeah. It's confusing and it causes fear and it hurts your relationship. Yeah. And it's just not necessary. It's just not right. It's not necessary. Stephanie, always great to see you. You're doing such a great job <laughs> with our you. tech man here. And to connect with Stephanie, check out the scene on Houston Live section of our website. Stephanie Bennett with Believe in Dogs. <gasps> Thank you again. so much. It's always so much fun. And Let thanks, Liesl and Tex. Okay, they now they play. can have each other. <laughs> Still ahead on Houston Life Western Wear, it has never <laughs> looked so chic. We're gonna show you what to wear to Rodeo Houston if you wanna look like a complete fashionista. Don't go away. Thanks, guys. Welcome back. If you're looking to add flair to your look for Rodeo Houston, there are some simple ways to upgrade your outfit or accessories. And if you're looking to add flair to your look, Angela Ceballos, director of retail for the Post Oak Hotel, is here with some chic rodeo fashion, looking fabulous yourself. Thank you so much. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having us. We really appreciate it. You know, this is such a great time of year for Houston. Everybody, I know we all have rodeo gear, but we don't necessarily want to wear the same stuff over and over. Exactly. So, you know, 29 North, we offer so many different exclusives that we kind of want to cater to that customer that has done rodeo, grown up in Texas. You know, what can we do that's a little bit different? So, And yeah. speaking of different, your top, I mean, you're breaking so the rules cute. here today, I am. Angela, because that's a pajama top? It is a pajama top. It did, I, you know, I almost wore the full look, but I was like, let me tone it down for TV a little bit, <laughs> put some denim on. But yes, you know, this is another example of how you can just turn something that you would think is for indoors only into everyday fashion. I love it. Also comes in pink, which it I may does. have to add to the wardrobe, Angela. Okay, let's get started with our first look. Okay. We have Brooke coming out and talk to us about what she's wearing. Yes, Super so, cute. Yes, so Brooke is in a retro fade dress. It's 80s inspired. This is for the girl that wants to be a little bit more glamorous at rodeo, but still look really fun and be very comfortable. Uh, she is wearing two of our Sydney Evan Texas script brace, uh, necklaces, I'm sorry. She's wearing a King Ranch uh, briefcase tote. Love that. That we just got in the store and then our exclusive Mirren Crosby Caroline boots that are handmade in Dallas. I love how the dress too is pleated on one side but smooth on the other yes. side. Yes, you can wear that over denim too if you wanted to. You can open it up and throw a t-shirt under it. There's yeah. various ways to wear this dress. What I love too is that you're gonna mix and match it and yes. I love that you added in a little bit of the red in that yeah, boot. It really brings it out. Rugged, you know. 
it is rodeo, so we kind of have to keep it a little country. Absolutely. Yeah. That look will definitely be turning heads. Brooke, yes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Brooke. All right, Alyssa's our next model. Yes. Let's bring her out and. So Alyssa is our country rodeo girl who wants to be a little bit more edgy, wow. a little bit unexpected. So she is wearing our Sydney Evan Texas Gold Studs. They're in the shape of uh, the state of Texas. We love them. Fun. She's wearing a Zainab RK Leather Bustier, and we put that on top of a frame uh, linen striped down blouse. Uh, we do have a uh, frame denim, just super clean, easy denim, Isaac Reina tote, and we did tie one of our Karen Maybon scarves around the handle just that to add cute. a little bit extra fun. And then again, our exclusive Mirren Crosby cowboy boots. Those are so cute. Mm -hmm. The green, the cactus on there, adorable. Yes. And I love this. This is very unexpected, yes. but from head to toe, looks amazing. She's going to be comfortable. You know, it's going to get a little chilly at night, so she's ready to go. And in yes. general, for women, they wear the pants inside the boot, yes. while men do it the opposite. Mm -hmm. They wear it outside. Yes. Uh, you have to show that shaft. I mean, look at that boot. It's killer. Yeah. You've got to brag on so that. So beautiful. Very nice, yes. Alyssa. Okay, our yeah. next model, Lucas. Thank you for bringing a men's yes. look. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> time. Yes, Lucas and there you Go, Lucas with the pants over the boots. So we have Lucas. He is wearing a John Barbados coated moto in an olive color. So it doesn't have to be. It's a little unexpected with the olive. That's we like a great that. Jacket. Yes. We have an Inishman um, linen button down underneath. He's got the King Ranch backpack that just arrived at our store. I one of one. That. Yeah. And one of one. One of one. Oh no way. Yeah. That's a custom. Only one in the world. It's not custom, but it's the only one we got. Well, and King Ranch, by the way, they have a booth in the vendor section yes. of the expo. So Amazing. go check yes, them out. Yes, we have a fabulous partnership with them. We uh, He also has the Levi's. They're made in Texas. They're made and crafted in the El Paso factory, selvage denim. And then we have our Mirren Crosby men's boot, ostrich leather. And uh, yeah. As we talked about, he's got the pants over the boot. And you know those pants, <laughs> by the way, that's a great jean. You said it's Levi's? Yes. Which cut is it? It's um, a Japanese selvage. Okay, well, mm -hmm. that's good to know because I think sometimes it's called the tuck. I see people wearing like bell bottom boot cut jeans sometimes. Not that there's anything wrong with it, but I think this is a nice dressy. It's this is like the Switch modern the cowboy. Yeah. So yeah. he's ready for, he can go to work in this look and then go straight to the rodeo. Love it. I, I love see this. Derek in your outfit, Thank you. Lucas. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Lucas. Okay, let's check out Sydney. She's coming out, and um, this looks so cute too. Yes, so Sydney is for Sydney is dressed for the girl who just wants to be casually comfortable but still look really stylish. She's wearing our Karen Maybon uh, exclusive scarf. She does have some earrings on that are Sydney Evan as well. They're the diamond studded cowboy boots. Um, her top and her skirt are Love Benetti. And then she's wearing our uh, exclusive rodeo slides that were Karen Maybon and Stubbs and Wooten. And then her handbag is Isaac Reina. I mean, those are so cute. Yes. The slides are incredible. So I'm the not slides sure if you match guys the scarf. See them closely, but there's actually a cowgirl on a horse. Can you tip up your foot on top a little bit of that so shoe? Can see. There it is. Check mm -hmm. that out. Uh, adorable. Yep. Slides that are awesome. so in right now. And you can too. only find those at 29 North. Oh. And check the forecast before you wear those. Yes. <laughs> I know. Coat them, spray them down. <laughs> um, and you guys are doing a little something special for our Houston Life viewers. Yes. So Sydney that scarf that Sydney was wearing, um, twenty dollars from every scarf that we sell, it goes back to the uh, Houston livestock show and rodeo charity which provides educational scholarships youth programs so yeah we're so giving awesome. back as it's much that as pink can. one that she was wearing it right? comes in various colors okay. yes it's that pink one awesome yes that is so great all right to connect with angela check out the scene on houston live section of our website thanks so much for coming yes in. thank you so much for having thanks, me angela, and thanks fun. to all of our models y'all look great we'll see you at rodeo thank you still ahead on houston life after the break nashville-based singer elizabeth cook she brings her country sound to the hl stage we'll be right back Okay, so in case you missed it, last week Nashville-based singer-songwriter Elizabeth Cook stopped by Houston Life. What a treat. She's a good friend of talk show host David Letterman and released six studio albums, and here she is with Dharmagate. Gate.
was just the son of one good looking me. This alone should make us so take what There are so few things that we can really understand. Come on. So lovely. You can watch the full interview with Elizabeth Cook online at HoustonLife.tv. And did you know one in four people will develop in an eating disorder? We're bringing attention to the critical needs of people with this serious condition after the break. Did you know 30 million people in the U.S. will be affected by an eating disorder in their lifetime. That's exactly why the National Eating Disorders Awareness Week is so important to fight the stigma and truly misunderstanding surrounding anorexia, bulimia, and binge eating. Yeah, well, Amadis from the uh, Lovett Center, Amadis Cedarberg, she's a psychotherapist. She's here with us to continue the conversation. And this affects women, but men as well. And I think that yes. some people forget that part of the equation. Yes, um, eating disorders don't have discrimination. It affects all people of race, gender, ethnicity, economic class. Um, so anybody can be affected by this. I think there's a lot of research early on about women having eating disorders, but so much research is coming out about men speaking out and about 40 to 70 percent of men are on diets and 86 percent of women in the u.s are dissatisfied with their bodies they don't like the way they look so this is a big issue that needs to bring attention to and so yeah. i'm just really excited to be here talking about this because eating disorder awareness week is so important to kind of bring attention and lift the stigma around um, the stereotypes that people might have about this and it's really about communicating number one mm -hmm. because I think a lot of times when this does spiral out of control because mm -hmm. it will happen yes um, it's something that's been hidden for a long time mm -hmm. why the why is this even occurring yes there's a, it's a big combination of you know neurons firing in our brain genetic predispositions environmental cues and diet culture that all comes together to create this perfect storm people who have risk factors can include a history of diet anxiety maybe possible trauma so all these things are coming together and we live in a diet culture and a mentality that says do whatever it takes to be smaller um, that could be compulsory behaviors that could be eliminating categories of foods like no carbs no dairy um, work out even in despite of having physical injury so we're living in this culture where it says you know compensate for your physical and mental wellness in order to be a certain ideal beauty and size that is considered the ideal. A lot of times we hear these stories about athletes, and I think one of the ice skaters mm -hmm. recently on yes. the US team, Gracie, mm -hmm. she's mm -hmm. from Chicago, right. talked about this, and it was one conversation mm -hmm. she had with a coach that basically that male coach said to her, you need to lose some weight. Yeah. And from that point forward, she said she remembers eating, going through the day, and having a tomato yes. in a 24-hour period. Oh and gosh. basically it was like, mm -hmm. Ooh, maybe I shouldn't have even eaten that t tomato. Yes, and that just leads into like the signs of what to look for. What are you looking for? You're yeah. looking for changes in behaviors and attitudes around food, your relationship with food, around your body, and your self-perception. And, and I'm, I'm imagining that she probably had this moment of, wow, should I really be having that? And questioning. Yeah you know should i even be having that at all like can i bump up my performance if i do x y and z and so families or friends or loved ones who are looking out for these signs are looking for severity is this interfering with their life is it impacting their day-to-day -day functioning are they preoccupied with their weight is their personality changing? Do they have mood swings, um, depression, irritability? Are they preoccupied? Be, by the way, sorry to jump in. Yeah, Amos, but sure. This could be for any age group, right? Absolutely. Because for a lot of folks, uh -huh. this happens at a very
very young age, yes. that's when it begins. So much more research is coming out that even 9 to 12 year olds, 90% of girl, teen girls age 9 to 12 are on some sort of diet and would change one aspect of their body. That is so wow. unbelievable. I mean, yes. it just like hurts your heart to hear yeah. that. Only 2% of women in the U.S. feel that they're beautiful. 2%. Oh my gosh, that, that is, is shocking. That is so shocking, and it really just amplifies the sensations and the risks that people are willing to take to be small. I mean, diet culture is saying, do whatever it takes, and that's what, that's what people will do. And one of the diets right now, mm -hmm. quote unquote, is this intermittent fasting, yes. like where you are not eating yes. for a, a 12 to 24 hours. Yeah. And I'm like, we are, we need to eat. Yes, our bodies don't understand when we're purposefully restricting or when we are eating. It only knows, hey, I, I'm hungry and I, I need to eat something, something needs to be nourished. It doesn't understand, oh, okay, Amethyst is gonna fast in a few hours, so I can like hold on to stuff. I'm okay. I'm okay for the next few hours. It, it'll go into survival mode of, no, I am, I'm hungry. And that malnourishment in, impacts our brain and the way we think, it impairs our functioning. And so if we are very malnourished, uh, we can't function. We have memory loss. I have a lot of clients who will talk about the impacts of physical manifestations of their eating disorder, dizziness, chronic fatigue, dry skin, memory loss. And so this is not only impacting our physical wellness, it's mental, it's emotional, it's impacting our relationships we have, not just with ourselves, but with food and our families. And, and that's part of why this week is so important because one in four dieters will progress into having a full-fledged eating disorder. Okay, and very quickly, the numbers again are shocking, but if we are noticing some of these signs, how can we help and when do we seek professional help, Amethyst? Sure, I really encourage people to educate themselves on the warning signs. Um, the National Eating Disorder Association's website is a great place to find screening tools to see if you need help, resources and education for families and loved ones, as well as um, somewhere like the Lovett Center where I work that provides a healing space to begin Begin your road to recovery because long-term recovery is possible. It is possible, and that underscores, uh, you know, very important to remember that. Amadis, Absolutely. it's great to see you. Yeah, great Thanks to for the be chat. Here. And if you all would like to connect with Amadis Cedarberg, just visit the Scene on Houston Life section on our website. Thanks again. Awesome. We'll be right back. Are you tired of dealing with under eye bags and wrinkles? Lifestyle expert Amy Vanderoff recently stopped by to explain how Plexiderm can help. Welcome back to the show. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here with Plexiderm. I know, it's the answer. Let's talk yes. about it because this is what people need to put on. We always have that issue mm -hmm. of like those under eye. At some point it happens and you're like, I'm not sure what I can do now. You know what, and you're right. And heavy three-dimensional bags is uh, a big problem, not only for women, but mostly for men. They really suffer from those under eye bags. And we always show Richie as a great example of that because, you know, before there was nothing you could do to eliminate them for the day. And with Plexiderm, you apply it on clean, dry skin, just as Richie is right now. Seven it for 10 minutes keep your face still and you will see those bags visibly gone for the day it is so dramatic how well this product performs on expectations and when you say it's gone for the day, you mean, I mean, someone puts it on in the morning and they don't, let's say they have a work dinner after work, it's still yeah. going to last? So it's eight hours, we say, up to eight hours. Some people are using it for their day jobs and their everyday life. A lot of people save it for special occasions. Um, maybe they're going to an event or maybe an important job interview, maybe a class reunion, something they're going to be photographed a lot at. So we're seeing dramatic results on under eye bags, but we're also seeing amazing results on fine lines, on wrinkles, on those heavy forehead creases that are so much more than just a wrinkle and also those marionette lines around the mouth and that's what's so interesting is I know that we started this and talking about under the eyes because that's where we probably see a lot of the aging first mm -hmm. but we can use this in other areas you, you sure can and we've seen the best results under the eyes um, but again we show you these pictures to show how well plexiderm performs on other areas as well those 11 lines that maybe you get but in between your eyes and uh, the before and after pictures around the mouth are really really exciting well and especially on the forehead when you see uh, those deeper lines, a lot of people might think that fillers are the only option, but you say right. this is a way to avoid the costly yeah. injections that are 
and yep. they're painful as well. That's right. There's options, but this gives people an option to opt out of that, which is really great. And if you're like me, you guys have the product graveyard, right? We see things, we buy things, and we get them home, and either they don't work or they don't work fast enough. And that's where Plexiderm comes in. It's instant gratification. Again, you're putting this on clean, dry skin. In minutes, you're going to see those results. Well, let's check back in with Richie, our friend, after we're looking here. And you see a minute now has elapsed. Yes. And you see the difference. It's great. You know, this product, it's 10 minutes. But guess what? You're going to put this on, and you're already seeing visibly reduc uh, redu reduction in those bags. But wait the full 10 minutes. We mm -hmm. want this product to last throughout the day. So by setting it on your face, keeping your face still, which I say is the hardest part, because you're going to want to look at the text. You're going to answer the phone. You're going to want to do something. Just let it do its thing for 10 minutes. And that's why it lasts all day long, because you're setting it there on your face. And you guys have received awards because the product works so well? Yes, there's been awards. Um, uh, uh, a, a gold award it's seen, uh, received and also the uh, best innovative product of 2018. So, yeah, people are taking notes of this. Makeup artists who see beauty and beauty products in their chair all day long are taking note of this, which is really exciting because this product is so innovative. You know, it's interesting. We've seen the video and you love looking at the, bef you know, as the product is applied and then a minute later. But let's hear from the people, the testimonials mm -hmm. of people that actually use the product and see how they like it. My real true opinion is holy words I can't say on camera. <laughs> These lines bother me. They really do. And this is absolutely unbelievable. I mean, I could feel it just lifting my skin. It was amazing. It feels good. It feels great. Looks even better. And Amy, besides just regular people like you and me using the product, you also have professionals who use it as well. Which is, is so exciting because makeup artists see people in their chair all the time who want to look younger. They want to use products that are applicable with makeup as well. And so, uh, yeah, makeup artists have taken note of Plexiderm. And I think we do have a clip from one of the makeup artists using the product. Hi guys, my name is Sandy Marinese. I'm a professional hair and makeup artist and one of the number one question that I always get in my chair is, can you make me look younger? So we had a few people that we applied it to and some of them at first I was like, oh, I don't know if this is going to work. And I was so impressed how fast, efficient and how well it really worked. Now I could really say to people, yes, I can make you look younger. That's for sure. Okay, let's take a final look at Richie because now we're going to see really the full time has elapsed and how Plexiderm is doing on him. Yeah. This is unbelievable. It's unbelievable. And you can see after two minutes, guys, you're going to get this product home. You're going to be wanting to jump up and down and take right. selfies of yourself because in just two minutes, the results are so dramatic. Wait the full 10 minutes because you want this product to set and last throughout the whole day. And again, under eye bags, those crow's feet around the eyes, forehead lines, play with this product and a little dab will do you. This product is so concentrated. You're going to see it's a little bottle, a little tiny applicator, so just use a little bit. And you can see right there on your screen, if you call right now, you can get Plexiderm for up to half off with free shipping as well. The number to call is 800-923-7063, or you can visit them online at Plexiderm.com. Amy Vanderoff, great to see you. You too, guys. Thanks so much. Thanks for stopping by, and we will be right back. Coming up tomorrow on Houston Life, your family-friendly guide to the rodeo. From pony rides to the pig races, we've got the top five ways you can help keep the kids entertained. And plus, spend spring break down on the island. We're going to have a sneak peek of some of the fun happening at our favorite place, Moody Gardens. And a reminder to go to our website and enter to win our getaway giveaway at Hotel Sorella City Center. Well, this luxury hotel is located right in the middle of the energy corridor, offers the perfect break from business. Whether it's staying for a weekend or stopping in for a delicious meal, there are so many reasons to have a visit. Yes, and now you can have a visit on us. Go to HoustonLife.tv, click the link, enter your info for your chance to win a one-night stay. All rules and regulations are also posted on our website. Good luck, and that is such a beautiful hotel. We were just down there the other day for uh, Heather's baby shower. Yeah, over at the General the Public. Yeah, it was awesome. Beautiful. Good luck, folks. Make sure you enter. And stay dry today out there in the rain. Oh, but get out there and rodeo. Bring your raincoat, your rain boots. Wow.